Good morning, everyone. I woke up this morning thinking, wow, it's Kid Quake Day. I hope that you're as pumped up about Kid Quake as I am, or maybe even more. My name is Miss Christina, and it's my honor to be your MC this morning. I'm a librarian at San Francisco Public Library. And lately, I've been having a lot of fun creating special events with really cool authors, artists, and storytellers for kids just like you on the San Francisco Public Library YouTube. Honestly, though, it doesn't get more fun than getting up close and personal to a super talented author like the one we have today. She's going to share a bunch about her inspiration, her books, and more. And that's not all. Right after our awesome author presents, we'll have a super special activity with an artist that you'll want to make sure you stay for. So sit back, settle into your seats, take a breath, and pay close attention. Without further ado, let me introduce our first author. Keila Dawson has been a community organizer, special education teacher, school administrator, educational consultant, and advocate. And now, she writes children's books, lucky for us. She's an author and co-editor of No Voice Too Small, 14 Young Americans Making History, illustrated by Jeanette Bradley. She's also the author of Opening the Road, Victor Hugo Green and His Green Book, illustrated by Aliana Harris, coming out January, 2021. But before you meet Keela, Here's a quick peek at a few of the young changemakers featured in No Voice Too Small. I am just a kid who cares about where I live. I am just a kid who cares about what my future on this planet will be like. It's our lives that are on the line. It's our future. And we're being heard and people are listening because our voices matter right now. Speak up. Let your voice be a catalyst for change. My name is Levi. Hi, my name is Jason Charger. My name is Mari Kokni. My name is Yad Ahmed. My name is Nzari Kepra. And the future is us. Wow, I can watch that trailer all day long. I have my presentation that I am going to share with you on my laptop. Let me pull it up. Here we go, share screen, there it is. Here we go. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, thanks to the organizers of Kid Quake 2020 for inviting me. And thank you to all the students and educators and everyone here to virtually visit with me. I had always dreamed of writing a children's book. And one day, a friend challenged me to just do it. So with lots of determination and hard work and study, I have two picture books uh, that are published, one that'll hit the shelves in 2021 and more on the way. I love picture books because they allow us to see how written language and art come together to tell a story. Sometimes we see ourselves, our lives, and our experiences in books. And sometimes we learn about life and experiences of others. I'll show you 
uh, some picture books that tell you a little bit about me. I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. I've worked and lived in the Philippines, Japan, Texas, Virginia, the uh, Egypt, California in Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Today, I live in the Midwest, in the Buckeye State. You can re research that if you don't know where that is. So what does this tell you about me? Well, I love to travel. I enjoy adventures. And I love learning about cultures and communities different from my own. I'm here to talk about my book, No Voice Too Small, 14 Young Americans Making History. You met a few of the young activists in this book, in the book trailer. This book is a poetry collection. It includes 14 poems about 14 young change makers that are making a difference in their lives and in others. Look at the cover. Can you find the words edited by? You see Lindsay H. Metcalf, my name, Keila Dawson, and Jeanette Bradley. What does that mean? That means we suggested to the poets, maybe you'd like to change a word here or there in the poetry, but each poet wrote their own poem. That's like your teacher asking you to consider some suggestions or maybe a fellow student who has written some of your writing. These are our headshots. That's a fancy way of saying we took pictures that make us look good. Jeanette Bradley is the illustrator. So she drew all the pictures in the book. What else do you see on the cover? I see young people. Some of them are about your age. And they're walking in a group. One is carrying a sign. And the other one has a bullhorn like this. What do you think is happening? If you said they're at a protest, I agree. A protest is when people come together after something happens that they don't like and they want to see change. Maybe you've seen a protest lately on TV or maybe in the streets where you live or maybe you even marched in one. Jeanette and I wanted to send you a message with this book because that's what protesters do. When they are Marching in the street, sometimes you see someone with a bullhorn. And our message to you is no voice too small. Your voice matters. See the kid with the bullhorn? Her name is Mari Kopany. She's an activist. An activist is someone who is committed to taking action to solve a problem. One day, something terrible happened in the city where she lives. And Mari became the someone who did something about it. Why? Because Mari believes you're never too young or too small to change the world. Look at her expression. Do you think she is amused or angry, defeated or determined, fearful or courageous. Look how she's standing. How do you feel when you put your hands on your hips? Go ahead, do it. Who else does that? Maybe your parents. I know I've done it with my kids, adults. You may, maybe your teachers. Who else? Superheroes. Superman was a, a hero that I admired in my day. But today, you have the kid in Brave, Mia, even Captain Underpants. Let's take a look inside the book. Earlier, I said this book is a collection of poems, but it's much more. The youth in the book 
are real people. So the illustrator, Jeanette Bradley, had to draw realistic portraits of each of them. See the red arrow? In the book, each uh, uh, activist has a poem, uh, each of them uh, written by a different poet. See the green arrow? That's where you'll find a brief, a brief biography of each of the change makers. And at the bottom near the blue arrow is where you will find a tip that we included on something each of these young people did for you to consider when doing something you want to take action about for something you care about. We talked about Mari's portrait. Now I want to read to you her biography. And I want you to listen for what happened in her city, why she took action, why the illustrator drew her image the way she did, and why the poet wrote her poem in the shape of a water bottle. Mari Kopany became an activist at age eight because her life depended on it. In 2014, the town of Flint, Michigan began to get its water from a new and cheaper source. Treated improperly, the Flint River water corroded city pipes and became contaminated with lead and other toxins. The stinky brown water caused rashes and other sicknesses and doctors warned that long-term exposure to lead damages children's brains, blood, digestive systems, kidneys, and more. Years after Mari first opened bottles of water to take a bath and help her family cook, she still speaks out about the importance of safe water as little Miss Flint. So the tip we have on her spread is about something she did. Mari did a lot of things, but she is well known for a visit from President Obama after she wrote him a letter. So the tip related to that action is, in your city or state, who has the power to make things change? Write them a letter and ask for what you need. And there are 13 other young people with inspirational stories and poems about them in the book too. Earlier, while watching the book trailer, you heard from Levi Draham, a climate activist, Jacelyn Charger, a water protector, and Zari Kepra, a gun violence awareness activist, and Ziad Ahmed, who is an anti-racist activist. You'll notice each of the young people in No Voice Too Small have different interests and are taking actions in different ways. They are improving their lives and the lives of others from what they're doing. They are proof that there are many different ways to be an activist or an advocate. You meet DJ Annie Red, an anti-bullying activist who's speaking out about bullying through her music. And Judy Adams, who's speaking up about living with Down syndrome and collecting dimes to grant wishes. And other young activists speaking out about family equality, immigration reform, and more. I hope your parents and teachers will check out the No Voice Too Small activity guide and our book club on Flipgrid or our YouTube play playlist. You'll find mini writing workshops, poetry readings, and inspirational videos by some of our change makers. I'll close with a challenge for you. I'd like you to promise to step up to the mic. Use your voice. And when you have time, go over to Flipgrid or to our YouTube uh, playlist and take the No Voice Too Small pledge. Kids can make a difference. 
And I believe that because I agree with what Lindsay Metcalf wrote in her haiku, Resonate. No voice is too small to change a problem that's big. Change ripples forward. Now I understand we have some time for questions. That was fantastic, Keila. Let's give her some serious snaps wherever you are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Honestly, that was one of the best presentations I've seen about a picture story. I love how you went so deep into, you know, what you see, who played what role. So we do have some questions coming in. First sure. one, how did you find out about and decide which kids to feature in the book? Oh my, there were so many children. Um, we, we basically wanted to make sure that there was a balance. So we looked for uh, uh, girls and boys. Um, we wanted to share a variety of different ways kids are taking action. So we made sure that, that kids would see all the different ways in which kids are um, uh, taking action. So we made sure that the, the, the issues that they cared about were varied. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, at the end of the book, another question that came in is you write, for my mama who found her voice and passed me the mic. Can you share more about what that means to you? Yes, hmm. sorry. No problem. My mom was a change maker. She was the person people always went to when they had problems and she was a problem solver. So I was very fortunate to have her as a mother. So sorry. We welcome your vulnerability and so many of us are here because of the amazing things that our mothers did, right? Yes. So yes. we hold yes. that for sure. Yeah, she was born before women had the right to vote. Wow. Yeah, she was born in 1919, right before the passage. So I have a long history of activism in my family. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll get to read more about her in a book. <laughs> So there is a girl named Adora Sweetak in your book who says yes. adults can learn from kids. Oh, yes. What yes. have you learned from kids? Oh, my. I've learned point of view from kids because I think as adults, and we all have our own points of view. We had them as children. But I think sometimes as we grow, our focus may shift or change. So I think it's always important to listen to that young point of view because their windows and their mirrors are so different from our own experiences. Absolutely. So we have time for just uh, one more final question. Mm -hmm. Which do you enjoy better, writing true stories about real people or writing, making up stories and using your imagination in that way and why? Oh my gosh, um, well, <laughs> Actually, I enjoy writing about real people and I enjoy history. And I think mm. history is exactly what it is. It's history, it's, it's, it's his story and her story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are many stories in history. And I love writing about those stories that we don't hear about, but that definitely contributed to history. And even when I write fiction, like my first fiction, my first book, it's about my own personal cultural experience. So there's research that goes into that as well, um, whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, but I, I, I enjoy uncovering untold true stories. Well, we thank you for that. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get my hands on, on your book. It, I am you just opened it up for me and I know for the thank hundreds you. of kids that are here with us today. So thank you again. Let's give it up for Keila Dawson, wherever you are, let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Sure, thank you. And now I think that we're all ready to do something, right? I'd like to introduce our activity leader, Isabella Kung, who is going to help you create something awesome. 
I'm going to give you a little introduction to who Isabella is, and then she's going to go ahead and take it away. So Isabella Kung is an author and illustrator of No Fuzzball from Scholastic that just came out this year. It's about a fuzzy feline queen who rules the house with an iron paw. She has illustrated for Candlewick Press, Committee for Children, PH Publishing, 826 Valencia, right here in San Francisco, and Ladybug Magazine. Her illustrations have received accolades from institutions such as the Society of Illustrators, Spectrum Fantasy Art, 3x3, Creative Quarterly, and SCBWI. Isabella currently resides here in San Francisco with her husband and two adorable cats. And find out more about her work on IsabellaKung.com. Let's go ahead and welcome Isabella. Everyone. Hi, thank you, Litquake and Kate Quake, for um, inviting me. I really am so excited to be a part of this. It's such a wonderful program. And thank you, Keela. That was such an amazing and inspirational book and presentation. And I love your book. I've already read it. It's amazing. Um, but speaking of No Voices Too Small, this little kitty has a really, really big voice. And um, thank you for the lovely introduction, Christina. Uh, this book, um, No Fuzzball, just came out this summer and it's about a sassy, majestic, attention-seeking black cat named Fuzzball. She is the queen of the house and is accustomed to a very high level of worship by her subjects. <clears throat> Actually, I mean family and just hear how they scream her name everywhere she goes. No fuzzball, no fuzzball, no fuzzball. Her Royal Highness enjoys a lavish and pampered lifestyle in her queendom, but when her subjects leave for the weekend, she questions whether she should be a more benevolent ruler. What will she do to win them back? You'll have to read more about it to find out. But regardless of that, I want to show you how to draw her because I think she's just so cute and majestic. Look at her fur and she's so beautiful. She is the queen after all, right? So today we're going to learn how to draw Queen No Fuzzball. Um, are you ready? I hope you are. Um, so first you, I did uh, provide an activity sheet. And if you don't have it now, you will always be able to print it out later and to practice. Or if you have it with me, you can feel free to have, draw it on the first step. I have a little area for you to draw or on a separate piece of paper. You can get a sketchbook. You can get um, just any, you know, copy paper, whatever you feel comfortable drawing in. And about supplies, I would like you to have first a pencil, just an HB pencil, a color, black color pencil, or a marker, it's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with, and an eraser just in case. Um, don't feel afraid to erase and draw again. I am, I totally do that, that's why it's there. Um, and you know, there's no such thing as mistake in uh, art. You just have to keep working on it. It's just part of the process, right? So, are you ready to start? I'm going to draw on here. Um, okay, so I'm going to move the screen a little bit lower. All right, so I'm going to get started. Okay, so first things first, you're going to draw an oval and a circle. And watch how I'm holding my pencil, because if I hold it normally like this when I'm writing, it gets really dark very easily and really exact. I just want to use it like this. I want to use it as broadly as possible. So I'm going to draw an oval right here. Look how soft I'm drawing. You can barely even see it on here. I'll move it closer. How light is that? The reason why I do that is because I only want to use my pencil to draw guidelines. And guidelines are so helpful because look how big this sheet is. If I, let's say, draw an eye here and I don't have guidelines, I could very easily draw my eye all the way over there. That's too far. And then I have to erase and start all over again. So if I had something like a guideline, it's easier for me to follow and easier for me to gauge where I put things. So big oval here, and then we're gonna do another bigger, almost circle kind of oval at the bottom. So these guidelines symbolize Fuzzball's face and her body underneath all of that beautiful, majestic coat. 
uh, royal coat, that is. Um, so now I have this guideline. Again, I'm doing it so lightly just for me to see. And when I'm done with everything, I can erase it and nobody will even know I have guidelines. Okay, so now that I'm ready, so looking at this guideline, this, if this is the face, I'm going to think, where is the middle of this oval? It's kind of right here. So with my color pencil or marker, I'm going to use a marker. I'm going to draw an upside down triangle. And that's her nose, a little, little nose. And then I'm going to draw a little dash sideways here and a little dash over here. That's her little mouth. So it's kind of like a triangle that's not finished yet. And because I, I'm at the end of uh, drawing fuzzball, I'm gonna show you a few different expressions, but fuzzball's signature expression is full of attitude. So I'm gonna draw her eyes right next to her nose and mouth. It's gonna start with a line and it's gonna have a half circle underneath. That's one of her eye, right? And I'm gonna draw another eye on the other side and same thing. Look, she's already full of attitude right there. And I'm gonna draw her pupil because we got to draw the outside of her eye, her pupil in here. Not very impressed. That's what a queen should look like, right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna draw a little bit of a highlight inside another two little circles. So it's almost like three circles and then I will fill it in. So she looks so her beautiful, intimidating black eyes. So she's already looking like she's coming alive. So now I have that, I'm gonna start drawing the rest of her body. So looking at the circle, again, guideline, you don't have to follow exactly, it just helps you gauge where things are. On the top of it, I think I drew my circle a little too high up, so I'm gonna go a little lower. I'm gonna draw tiny little dashes, kind of like hair, right? And then on the, around the corner of her eyes, or not yet, but almost, I'm gonna draw an upside down triangle for one of her ears and then another for the other side. And I'm already starting to do a little bit on the top here. I'm gonna do a little bit more of her fur on the side and body. And I look at the way I'm drawing. I am flicking, you see that? Do you know why I do that? It's because I'm gonna exaggerate here, okay? So when I do really big flick like that, you see how it's thicker on the start? and then thinner on the other side, that's called a tapered line. And when you grab your own hair, your eyebrow hair, any hair, or your doggy or your kitty's fur, and you put it under a microscope and you zoom in, that's how it looks like. So I'm literally drawing hair. And if I do it a lot, it really looks fluffy and furry. And that's the trick for drawing hair or fur. <laughs> And sometimes if, you know, you can always do um, little zig, uh, zigzag kind of looks um, as if um, her hair is getting clumped up on one side. So I'm going to keep drawing that. And then I'm going to draw the rest of her body too. Again, looking at this guideline. So you see in the middle where the two ovals and circles overlap, it kind of turns in a little bit. That's my indication of where her neck is. But I'm kind of going to ignore that. I'm going to keep going because she has such luxurious fur. It's kind of like your winter coat, right? You can't really see what's going on under that winter coat. You can be hiding snacks. You can be put, you can hide a book. You can, you, you can be skinny. You can be really strong. Nobody knows what's under your really thick jacket or coat. And it's similar to no fuzzballs, beautiful fur coat, right? So I'm just gonna keep drawing. I'm gonna, but, but it really is helpful with uh, these guidelines for when I draw different poses inside the book. So I'm gonna keep going. And then more hair as it goes on, it's gonna get longer all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm not gonna draw all the way throughout the circle. I'm gonna draw a line because she is sitting on something, right? She's sitting on the ground or your table or your kitchen counter where she doesn't belong. But anyways, I'm gonna draw her hair and then it's gonna fan out a little bit towards the bottom because you know hair, when my hair lays against something, it kind of squishes out. And then I'm gonna leave a little space down here. Anyways, so once I have her overall body, I'm already seeing it. I'm gonna look at the circle and I'm gonna find the middle of that bottom oval circle shape. And I'm gonna start drawing a little bit of chest hair. 
So pointing downward. And then I'm going to draw her two front arms and paws. And she's going to put her paws together, her arms together, because she is so proper. She's going to so draw one line in the middle, because they're squeezed together, and then one side and the other side. And when I get to the ball, how do I draw paws? Paws, cats and dogs paws, is kind of like human hands, but except they're all basically stepping on tiptoes. Their little pads are kind of like this, and then her toes are kind of curled up like that. So imagine when your doggy and kitty are walking around, they're stepping on their tippy toes almost. Um, so they curl up. So to draw paws, it's kind of like your alphabet. You do three little C's, actually. And then on the other side, you kind of do a backwards C. And then that cover up. So now you have little paws on her. Um, I got a little skinny over here, but it's okay. I can add a little bit more fur to fill that up. So now what's missing? Her tail, you guessed it. So there's so many options for the tail. You can draw it curled up here. You can draw it curled up over here. You can have it curled down here. I've been drawing her tail up for a long time. So I'm gonna draw her tail curled up at the bottom. Again, look at me flicking. And I'm going in the direction of where the tail is heading. The tail. If I wanna do a curl like that, I'm gonna do it. Like and then I'm sitting, finishing up on the other side. And then the more space I have between it, uh, the more fluffy and the longer the hair will look. So there's a lovely tail curling up. So what's missing here? Whiskers. So kitties have lovely whiskers on top, like their eyebrows and around their lips. So whiskers is basically like hair, but they're harder and they're much longer. So the top eyebrow whiskers, I'm gonna flick upwards. I, she has three. And then we're gonna with lip whiskers. The left one will go left, right one will go right. Again, also three, but much longer. And don't ever, ever trim kitties' whiskers because kitties use those to sense the world around them. They're not very, they're very good eyes. They can see very far and they can see moving objects really well. But when things are really close to them, they can't really see very good. So they use the whiskers to feel areas around them. And like really, you can see videos of kitties with really small spaces and they can squeeze through that. They, they know if they can fit by how the whiskers touch. If the touch is too small for them, they're not gonna even gonna try. Anyways. There's one more thing we're gonna miss because she is the queen. She needs a crown. So here is her crown and you can decorate her crown however you like. I am gonna make that. I'm gonna put little dots on top and put a little heart even in the middle. And there we have it. We have Fuzzle. No, she's our queen and I am so pleased. And if you like at home, you can always color her in because she is a black cat, but to save time, I'm gonna move on and show you how I can draw different expressions because she is known to be expressive. If you look at my book, there's a lot of, lot of different expressions and poses in the end papers. All right, so first I'm gonna draw, now we got a one with attitude. I'm gonna draw a fuzzball with, um, a lot of joy when she sees treats or when she sees her subjects after a long weekend away. So I'm gonna use tracing paper to save time. Um, so first, of course, I'm gonna start off with drawing her face again, really, really, really quick. So you can see her expression within a face. Okay, so what I can do is mainly changing the eyes and, her and facial expressions really help convey how you feel inside. Like there's also body language too, but a lot of the things, if you can tell somebody sad, happy, anxious, anything like that, you really shows on somebody's face. And when I do an illustrate children's book, I have to convey a lot of different emotions. So knowing how to do facial expressions really, really help tell my story. And also another fun fact, I definitely do those facial expressions when I draw them. I truly believe that's how you make a better expression. Anyway, so to draw a happy face, I'm going to do another oval because she is no longer going to give me a side eye of attitude. Uh-oh, I'm going to made a little uh-oh over here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna make the lines a little thicker to hide that. There's no such thing as mistake. Anyway, she's gonna look up at her crown because she's happy she has a crown. So I'm gonna move her pupil looking upwards. 
And then I'm going to quickly shade it in later on after I draw the mouth. So again, with her little nose, her nose doesn't quite change so much, but her mouth does. So a little dash. And then as if the number three is taking a nap, laying down sideways. Look how much her expression changed. I'm going to color that in just so you can see the difference here. Attitude. Attitude, right? All right. Now we're going to move on to draw another expression. I'm going to draw her surprised. So what do you look like when you're surprised? Like this, right? Your eyes really, really open up because you're trying to take in all the information. There's so much going on. So let's do what kitties do. What would Fuzzball look like when she's surprised? All right, gotta, once again, draw her face really, really quickly, just to show. Uh, her hair, see? Flicking hair is so much fun. I love drawing hair. So how do I draw supplies? Again, you're gonna make her eyes really, really big. It's almost a circle, even bigger than her happy face. And one thing about uh, kitties that are so cool is her pupils uh, can go big, like a big round circle, and it can change very quickly and become a very tiny split. So split, uh, uh, so they can really control how bright or how dark. So, and that's why kitties can see really well in the night. But she's going to look surprised and she's going to have a split in the middle. Oh no! She's already surprised! And then you know what? Let's make her mouth open like she has a jaw drop experience. Like she's saying, oh no! Why? And then of course she is a kitty, so we're gonna give her little feline teeth in the middle here. I mean, on the side, sorry. Like her fangs right here and right here. We're gonna have a little fangs right here. See? Surprised! Happy! Attitude! Okay, we have one more minute. Let's see if I can draw an angry face really, really quick, okay? Um, angry face. Now there is a little bit more body expression. Uh, now humans, we can't move our ears quite so much, but kitties can and doggies can too. So uh, in order to express that they're angry or scared or defensive, they kind of lower their ears, turn back. They're not happy. So that is a great body language to show that they're not happy gonna go really really quickly sorry about that so how to make her look angry instead of attitude angle down because look when I'm mad I'm gonna scrunch my eyebrows and my eyes even so let's exaggerate that she's looking right down the middle uh, and quickly it's almost like her attitude eyes, but tilted. You see, she's mad again. So that's how you do a few expressions. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you had fun drawing with me. If not, I really hope you can have some time and practice at home. It, it's okay if it doesn't look that great at the beginning. I wasn't that great at the beginning too. It just takes a little bit of practice. So thank you. Thank you, Kitlet, for having me and drawing along with me, everybody. Thank you so much, Isabella. I had a blast watching you and I'm sure that all the kids watching you had so much fun. I just want to see if we could do a little activity really quick. Can, since we went through all these expressions, can kids, can you do this with me? Can we show our side eye? Can we be happy? Surprised? Angry? Delighted? Yay! I hope that's how you're all feeling right now. Well, it has been so great to be your MC this morning. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Keila Dawson. Don't forget to use your scholar card, your very own SFPL library card that gives you all the access to the amazing books that we saw today and more. Books that you can also listen to, books you can read on a device or magazines and movies that you can watch. Check out sfpl.org for all the things to learn, read, see, and do. I just want to say on behalf of San Francisco Public Library, have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. And thank you so much for joining us at KidQuake. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.